box contains over 100 cards just created by SGC. Let's see what's inside. Let's get started with the oversized cards. First up is a trade card from 1878, Huntley and Palmer's. This features a kayaking subject. There is a baseball subject in this set that's really desirable. It goes over 500 plus. I really like that it has so much product information on the back. Kayaking's big here in Sonoma County. This is three years after the start of trading cards in general. So very happy to have this early example in relatively good condition. Those gold borders are super sensitive. Happy with the 1.5 there. This next set is from Topps. First um, uh, full baseball issue. They did stamps in uh, 1948, but those were multi-sport and not nearly as attractive as what they did in 1951. The team cards have the full team listed on the back by Will, including some Bat Boys and a couple of cards. I really like this set, especially since they're so tough to find in good condition. That one got a one, obviously enough. They were issued in packs that also could contain these All-Star cards. There's two different All-Star sets, County Max and the uh, All-Time All-Stars. These are both from the County Max subset. I think I have five in her total, all from the County Max subset. One important thing to note is they do come in different colored backs. We have the white back her and the cream back her. They do have a bios of the plier listed. And if you might have guessed it based on that piece being unique to that card, uh, the full background was covered in red and was a rectangle. People were instructed to pop them out on the back of the card to stand them up. So a lot of them we mainly don't have the red background. Here's another couple of examples. This one's missing more red down here even. These are of Hall of Famer James Collin. Again, we have the white and cream back represented. This one earned the altered, or I both earned the altered since I both have tape. But nonetheless, very cool cards to have. Very happy to add two more of those to my collection. This is one of my favorite cards from the set. It is County Mac himself, Hall of Fame manager, very important man in the history of baseball. And it has his bio as well. And I really like that his signature here is a bit different than the other cards look since it doesn't include the uh, County Mac All-Star Blanner, provided it is County Mac himself. Next up, this one was a little bit of a disappointment. I thought it would get a numerical grade, but apparently it's not quite tall enough. These are really tough to find with the tab. If you guys don't know about Doby, I'll do another video on him soon. Very important. Uh, early African-American player, first in his league, uh, overshot by a jockey dramatically, but I'm happy to have that one slabbed nonetheless. Next up are a couple cards out of 1969 and 1970 tops. Basketball, oversized cards, again, very condition sensitive due to their large size. Dag Bing got a five and Oscar got a 4.5. Happy with those two. They look really nice in the tux, the white and black, good stuff. And last, but certainly not least, the Wilt Chamberlain graded 5.5. Very, very happy with the grade on this one, of course. Really iconic card. Very, very happy to have it. Number one of this set has his bio on the back. His rookie, I believe, was 1961, so a bit into his career, but this is one of his first, if not his first, tax card. So I'm very, very happy to have it in a 5.5. Let's move on to the normal size cards. We still have over 90 cards to go through, so we're going to do this fast. I'm not going to talk nearly as much as I, as I did about those 11 just now. But we will get through these, and you will see every card included in the submission. Let's Moving do we're it. We're starting off with some Allen and Gunters from 1888 N26 World's Beauty Set. This one got a nice 3.5 grade. I really like that card, even if I do not know who Leslie Shuster is. Speaking of people I don't know, all of these lords and dukes of the N22 Racing Colors of the World Set. Obviously, not nearly as big as a sport as it used to be. Um, but with Tops and Fanatics producing, the Allen and Ginter set every year. A lot of people are getting drawn to these original Allen and Ginter cards. And I think the color is beautiful. I think the different poses are neat. Very happy to have some of these slabs in my collection. I got these all part of a lot more. Very happy with them. I like that guy's shirt a lot. Two and 2.5. Natural shabby. Got a one her and a 1.5. But again, female racers from 1888. At least I think those are females. I might just be pretty men. I'll have to look at that later. Got an Earl and a Duke again. One and a three. I like the polka dots a lot. Very cool stuff. 
Next up, we got the Duke of Portland and the King of Netherlands. Very cool cards, both red of two. Coming up next, two more, 1.5 and two. This one's actually from a different set, the World's Dude set. I really like this set. I got three of them in the submission. On the right, we have the German student hanging out with his dog. And on the left, we got a Turkish guy smoking a Turkish pipe. Really like the fat my shows for World's Dudes. Pretty cool cards. The third dude we have here is a Neapolitan. Not sure what that means exactly, but I like those pants a lot. Might have to find me some of those. Next, we have the N25 set from 1888 as well. Wild Animals of the World. Um, obviously, not the best condition cards, but I really like that they're iconic animals, the kangaroo especially. And I also like that it lists the full shock list of animals on the back. That's not something that happened with baseball cards until a bit later. Here we have the muskox and the gorilla. The gorilla is obviously nothing like a gorilla. Often the artist would be painting these without ever seeing one of the animals in real life. Grizzly, bear, and giraffe, both graded one. Clean backs though, I like those a lot. Really nice tiger, which I like a lot, and the American oak. Just iconic the subjects from an iconic set. Next, we have a card from 1889, the Allen and Gunter World Sovereign set. This one features the Queen of Portugal. Has the checklist on the back as well. Really like that card. These two are also from 1899, different Allen and Gunter set. We got Colorado and Indiana's Capitol buildings depicted her. The uh, Colorado example is in slightly nicer condition, while Indiana has the paper loss. Very cool cards. Happy to have those both in my collection. Next up are a couple dogs from 1890 Goodwin and Old Judge. Water dog on top, Maltese on bottom. Water dogs in much nicer condition with the back being really well intact. Next up, we have a lot of boxing cards. I'm still learning a lot about boxing. Got Peter and Jimmy Mellon here, 3.5 and 4.5. Happy with those cards. And here we have some even nicer examples, 5 and 3.5. Frank Sargent Robinson. You guys probably know a lot more about boxing than I do. I'm a vintage baseball card guy, so I have a lot to learn about boxing still. Got these all as part of a partial set, and I'm really happy with them, and I really like looking at the mustaches, to be honest, giving me inspiration. This one got a really nice five, Jim Roach, and then we got Donnie Denny there. Again, I don't even know what names are worth calling out. I only know a few names, learned a lot more. I think Jimmy Brett might be an important boxer. Lots of good guys depicted her, and being over 100 years old and getting these two to fives, I'm really happy about that, of course. Working on my way through the boxing cards, Nielsen and Gain, her, Gain and a four. That brings us to the next stack, and here we are with Eugene Volatin and Ernest Siegfried. Keeping it rolling, next we have Henry Elser and Jimmy Britt. Again, I think Jimmy Britt might be an notable player. Happy to see him in a four as well. Pat Connolly and Bill Lyon. Again, I think that he might be a notable boxer as well. The last two from this set. Actually, this is a 1915 set, but it looks a lot alike. You can see the back is different than the 1908 and 1909 ones we just went through. Happy with those grades. Her, these are from 1915. Black borders make them particularly condition sensitive. Big crease in that one. This one got a really nice three. I like the images on both of those as well. The black and white photography versus the full color portraits. This one's from a different set from 1925. Cool one as well. Here we have one from 1935, almost like a comic book-like drawing of Lee Harvey. These next cards are from 1910 Mirwad cigarettes. There were college series and depicted a number of different subjects. We have golf depicted in this one for the University of South Carolina. And her for Haverford, we have a baseball card from 1910. Pretty neat. Next, we got hunting for Hastings. And then West Virginia is a college that they shows golf for. Pretty cool to see some of these colleges. I have a couple listed already, including some Ivy League schools. For Matt, with the discus, poor condition, but I did discus in high school, so I wanted to use that one. And Wesleyan just has its manner there. Whitgers is going to be a popular card, I'm sure. Graded one, but nonetheless. And then we got the big suck for University of Kentucky. And again, from 1910, I'm just really happy to have these cards in condition. Apologies about that noise. We got Amherst and then Penn State, recognizable universities to this day, of course. The one that dropped, but it's new and all white. Shot butt, another one I did in high school. That one is for University of Kentucky. And then we have the Highwim. Almost looks like it had color added, but I think that's just kind of leaking from the set. SUC didn't think it was color added, at least either. 
again, I don't do military a ton, but this one has the US Cadet, which I was really excited about, and then also Tolstoy, which was a D206 back. I think that's a pretty cool card, despite the writing on the back. A non-sports subject here, we have Shakespeare, Giant Crease, knew it was gonna get the one, of course, for the 1911, this is from the T68 set, also produced by the American Tobacco Company, manufacturers of the T206 series. And here are some T206 cards. I didn't submit any high grade examples on this one, but I think really every T206 card is worth getting slabbed, provided their importance to the hobby and collectability once authenticated. This one right here is the Tolstoy back that we just saw on that military card. One of the tougher backs of the set, not the hardest, but definitely much more difficult than Piedmont and Sweet Caporal backs. Speaking of Piedmont, here we have a Purring and a 1, another Liebhart and a 2. Both Piedmont 350, factory number 25 backs from 1910. Some slightly nicer great examples. We have Herbie Howell and Billy Nackwis. Very happy both of these scored threes. And this is another Tito sits back for those who don't know. Sweet Caporal was another brand I produced under. And then finally, that brings us to these really cool cards. Uh, these are from the 1911 uh, to 1912 Royal Bengals T99 set. Here we have the Parthenon at Greece, and here we have the Grand Canyon. These cards have beautiful gourd borders. I was really impressed when I saw the condition and the lad I bought them in, and I'm very happy that they all did quite well. This ship is associated with the Titanic. Uh, sister ship, if you will, that actually survived while the Titanic did not. Coming up next is the Geysers 3.5. I really like that image also. Here we have Niagara Falls, slightly more notable and slightly better condition. A little bit OC right to left, but those corners and edges are sharp. I like them a lot. Here we have the Grand Canal at Venice. Gorgeous card in my opinion. Happy with that one a lot. Looks like the Washington Monument, but it is not. This is the Obelisk, which is what the Washington Monument was made after. And it is in New York also. Very cool card. Modeled after, I think I might have said named after, my bad. And it's not the first perm I'd like that to clarify. Anyway, next up, 1950 Bowman, Joe's Crowell, poor condition, but he's a Hall of Famer, so that's why I slapped him. And uh, next, another Hall of Famer, Bob Highs, wide receiver, got a sits from 1970s stops football. Last two cards, nothing too giant here. Here we have a Tim Wayne's rookie card, graded 6.5. I thought it might have a chance at a 7 or 8, but overall, happy to have that one slabbed. And last but not least, one of my favorite cards, it got the oversized slab due to its thickness. This has a bat relic of Larry Doby, graded A, Jackie depicted as well. There's variations of this card with Jackie's uniform and Jackie's bat, and I do a relic variation as well. I haven't owned those yet, but I want to. I'll be on the lookout for those. Happy to have the Doby bat variation graded A. Thanks for tuning in all. That was 100 cards graded by SGC.